Hi everyone, welcome to today's Middle Grade Monday. My name is Lori and I'm a librarian at Manlius Library and today I'm going to tell you about some funny books. Something for everybody. I've got a great selection. We're going to start with The Crims by Kate Davies. The Crim family is full of notorious criminals. Notoriously inept, that is. Uncle Knuckles once tried to steal a carnival. And Great Uncle Bernard held himself hostage by accident. But Imogen, our main character, is different. She was born with a skill for scandal, a knack for the nefarious, a mastery of misdemeanors. Her dream of being head girl at school, however, is shattered when she's revealed to be a crim and then she's expelled. An elaborate heist recently landed most of her family in jail and to their delight, on the front page of the newspaper. Imogen is certain her family is incapable of pulling off such a crime. Heartbroken, she returns home determined to prove their innocence and return to school with her name cleared. This is a hilarious eccentric romp. As Imogen and her cousins investigate the theft, they utilize many illegal techniques. Surprising facts emerge about who is really to blame. It's great for fans of the mysterious Benedict Society and um, the mixed up files of Mrs. Basil E. Frankenweiler. There's a lot of wordplay. It's packed with ridic ridiculous criminal plans, secret hideaways, and so much heart. Plus, lots of laughs along the way. Next up, Funny Girl. Funniest stories ever. If you're looking for something broken up into small bits that you can pick and choose from, this one's for you. These are full of humor regarding friends, families, and the awkwardness of growing up. And they come in all formats, including short stories, exchanged letters, comics, verse, and magazine-style quizzes. Those are always fun. Several of the writers mine real-life embarrassments for material. YouTuber Akila Hughes recounts a traumatic bikini-related wardrobe malfunction, and Megan McCarthy recalls stapling her own thumb at school, an injury no one seemed to know how to handle. And Adrian Chalapa closes the collection with an instructive essay that offers advice applicable to these and other situations. Have an unshakable sense of confidence, even when you're literally bleeding. It's fun and it's funny and there's something in this collection for everyone. Next up we have a surprising pick. Charlie Joe Jackson's Guide to Not Reading by Tom Greenwald. Charlie Joe Jackson is a likable kid and he is an unashamed non-reader. In fact, He's so against reading that he constantly gets in trouble just to make sure that he never has to crack a book. He makes deals with friends to fill him in on assigned reading. And when he's caught, it becomes much more difficult to pull off his year-end research-heavy position paper. He nails it, but there's no happy ending, and he's assigned to write a book, this book, over summer vacation as punishment. It's full of tips for other book readers. Things like always beware of plot twists and look for short chapters. This one has lots of very short chapters, fun illustrations, whoop, fun illustrations, and lots of laughs. Sunny Side Up by Jennifer and Matthew Holm is next. Um, they wrote Baby Mouse and Squish. This one's a graphic novel takes place in August of 1976, so there's a bit of historical fiction, and the pop culture references are really good. Ten-year-old Sonny's parents have sent her to Florida to visit Gramps. Unfortunately, staying with Gramps means a creaky hide-a-bed, early dinners, and tons of old people. Soon, Sonny meets Buzz, whose dad works at Gramps Retirement Resort, and thank goodness she does. Buzz introduces Sonny to Swamp Thing, Spider-Man and Batman, and a whole universe opens. The two while away hours at the comic shop, find senior residents lost cats, and get chased by a local alligator. All in a summer day, summer's day's work. But there is a more serious side to this one. You'll discover it as the story goes on. There are a few sequels out already out for this one. It's good for someone who wants a little bit more story with the laughs. Oh, and did I mention, it's a graphic novel. This one's great. Next up is The Misadventures of Max Crumbly, book one, Locker Hero. This is by Rachel Renee Russell. Poor Max Crumbly. 
stuffed in his locker for the second time in one day. Thinking he might never get out, Max decides to chronicle his first two weeks of eighth grade, eighth grade at South Ridge Middle School in his journal. At least then there'll be a record of what happened when his body is found. Coming from seven years of homeschooling, Max dreamed of being a superhero here. Instead, he's school bully Doug Thug Thurston's new favorite target. Luckily, Aaron Madison rescues Max from his first involuntary locker violation, or locker vacation. But Thug strikes next after everyone has left for a three-day weekend. Enduring a few hours of cramped conditions, Max escapes through the back of his locker, where he crawls through the ductwork. He encounters robbers and has to try to save the school's new computers. It's funny, it's realistic, to a certain extent. It's also the first in a series. It's really well illustrated and it's a great underdog story. It's good for fans of Wimpy Kid, Big Nate, Dork Diaries. That's The Misadventures of Max Crumbly. A lot of fun, I think you'll like it. And finally, something a little more ridiculous. Claude, Evil Alien Warlord Cat by Johnny Marciano. For generations, the highly evolved planet of Litterbox ex exiled its criminals to a vast wasteland of a planet inhabited by a race of carnivorous ogres. Hmm. Before outlawing the practice as cruel. But former High Lord Emperor Whis Whiskas' crimes are so dastardly that they resurrect the practice and send Whiskas to Earth. He lands in a small Oregon town and heads to the nearest house where he's taken in by Raj, who has just moved from Brooklyn's wealth of pizza, candy, and comics. Raj is miserable, and adopting the cat, whom they named Claude, helps. The chapters alternate between Claude, who is hard at work creating a device to return to Litterbox and exact his revenge, and Raj, who is attending a nature camp led by an anti-technology survivalist counselor. Claude learns English so the two can communicate, and while he does his best to disdain his humans, he may just come to care for him. This one is really funny, super silly, fast-paced, and cartoony, cartoony, again, with fast, fantastic illustrations. And there's um, at least one more, and I think two more of these out already. So that's Claude, evil alien warlord cat. So there you go, six very funny books for your summer reading delights. And speaking of summer reading, if you're signed up for the Manliest Library Teen Summer Reading Program, your secret code today is RATHER, capital R, RATHER. Go to your account, click on the Middle Grade Monday Mission, and enter the code to complete today's activity. I'll repeat it again at the end of the video. If you are a teen ages 12 to 19 in Central New York and you're not signed up, head over to our website at manliestlibrary.org and get signed up today. If you're under age 12, we have a reading program for you too. Now I'm gonna show you a really fun way to make homemade designer paper. All you need is shaving cream and some acrylic paints. Food coloring will work too. Oh, and some cardstock or other heavier paper. All right, we're here in the teen room and I'm gonna show you a really easy way to make pretty, interesting and unique designer paper. And all you need is shaving cream, the foamy kind, not the gel kind, any, any brand will do. This is, I think, from the dollar store. And paints, acrylic paints. You can also use food coloring. I'm gonna use acrylic paints in whatever colors you like. Something to spread the, um, not whipped cream, shaving cream. Something to spread the shaving cream. A tray to shape to put it in. I have just this cookie sheet lined in tin foil to make cleanup easier. And then you'll need paper. Something a little heavier than just regular copier paper. I've got some construction paper and you can also use cardstock. A ruler, a clean ruler and then something to swirl the colors with. You can use toothpicks, you can use a fork, you can use um, the, the spatula or knife that you're using to spread the shaving cream. I've got um, wooden sticks, craft sticks. Okay, and that's it. Okay, this craft is easy peasy. I do have a second tray set aside so that when we scrape off the shaving cream, we have some place to put it because it can get 
this one can get a little bit messy. You're gonna probably want paper towels, which I am getting right now, or a cloth or something just to be on the safe side. So, got your shaving cream. Shake it up good. There we go. This is a brand new pan, so. You just wanna kinda of fill your tray with shaving cream. You want the surface, the square surface of your shaving cream to be at least as big as the paper that you're going to lay down. So I'm going to fill it right up. Okay. So we've got our tray full of shaving cream. We want to use a knife or a spatula and just kind of smooth it out so it's fairly flat. It's kind of like frosting a cake. Okay, so you've got a fairly smooth, it doesn't have to be perfect, but fairly smooth surface. Spread it right out. Okay, so now is where the creativity comes in. You use your colors. Okay, so you've got your shaving cream and you've spread it out with your knife. Now we're going to put, or you could use a spatula, or you could use one of your sticks. Now we're going to put the colors on. Okay. You don't want to go overboard with your colors right away. You can always add more, but you don't want there to be too many because you can't really take them away. So swirl your colors on. Okay, so you've got your colors on. And like I said, you can use acrylic paints, you can use food coloring, doesn't matter which. Now you take your craft stick or toothpick, or you can use your knife, and you're just gonna swirl the paint through the shaving cream. And you can use any colors that you want. And you can do it in as much or as little of a design as you like. And the fun thing is, once you've done this once, you can add more shaving cream and or more colors and do it again and have something completely different. Okay, so just swirl it through. You don't want a lot of big globs of paint. You want it to be mostly colored shaving cream. If you swirl it too much, it will start to just look like a blob of brownish green. And if you like that color, that's a good thing. But you'll notice I have some paper set aside here. This is to dry, to set your paper on to dry once we've done the scraping off process. Okay, so we're gonna take, we've got our colors the way we want it. Take our piece of cardstock, lay it down on shaving cream and just kind of give it a good push don't don't drag it across the shaving cream but give it a good okay and then peel it up Set this aside. Put this in here. And with your ruler, you're just going to scrape off the shaving cream. Okay, you want to lay this flat. Just one of the reasons I like acrylics for this is. Uh, they're washable. If you get them on your hands, they're washable. If you use food coloring, it will wash off eventually, but it takes a lot longer. Just use your ruler and very gently scrape off the shaving cream. All right. 
Okay, you want to kind of make sure you've got it all. If not, you can go over it again with a second swipe. I'm going to grab a paper towel and just kind of do that. It'll also wash right off your ruler, so no worries there. Okay, looks pretty good. We're going to start on this side. Scrape it off that way. There we go. Like I said, this one's messy, but it's really easy. So there we have designer paper. We're gonna put that down and let it dry. Now, if you wanna do something a little lighter, use lighter colors or use fewer of them. If you wanna do both sides, let your papers dry and then do it again, flip it over and do it on the other side. So what you can do now is take your knife that you use to scrape your, the, or that you use to smooth out your shaving cream and if you want to change it up, just scrape off the top layer Again, it's kind of like frosting. You can use this for wrapping paper. You can use this, ooh, for writing letters, anything at all that you want. Now, you see what I mean when you, when you stir it all together too much, it does turn kind of brown. So we're gonna do that and we can add more shaving cream. And spread it out. Hey, you've still got some of the colors there. turquoise together. I think they're beautiful. So we'll do those two colors. Take a fresh craft stick and kind of swirl those around. All right, and then we'll take a piece of construction paper down on top of it. If all you have is white copier paper, you could do it with that. The issue is, or the, 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 the concern with white copier paper is it's a lot thinner and more fragile than these heavier papers. And if it gets really wet, it could um, disintegrate the paper. And we'll start here. Scrape it right off. I missed a little bit. And get that over there. And there you have designer marbled paper. And you can actually, if you get a pattern that you like, although it'll never be exactly the same, you can actually just keep going. You can see it's messy with that pattern. So there you go, six great books, all funny, all laugh out loud, full of great humor for you to enjoy and a super easy, fun, creative craft to make your own marbled paper. 
Again, if you're a teen in the, te in the Manlius Library Summer Reading Program, your code this week is RATHER, capital R, small A-T-H-E-R, RATHER. Find the Middle Grade Monday mission on your summer reading account and enter that in today's activity. Have a great week. Thanks for joining me. My name is Lori and you can find me here every Monday at 4 o'clock on the Manlius Library YouTube channel. I'll see you next week. Happy reading.